What's good everybody? Welcome to the channel. My name is Alchemy. Today we are going to be learning how to do a 128 rack. Now it's not something that I've made up, but it is an incredibly powerful tool when it comes to sample selection and having a bunch of access to a large amount of samples at your fingertips. So the first thing that we want to cover is to make sure that you know that we just released a Discord sample pack for free on the Discord. All you have to do is go and click the link in the description and that way you can download all the samples that we're going to be using in this pack, specifically thanks to Braxton over here from all the kitchen perks. Second thing, is we're doing a giveaway so if you're interested in getting yourself a free used sub pack once we hit 10,000 subscribers I'll make a video and I will give it away to one lucky winner so with all that out of the way let's go ahead and talk about what makes this work and actually what it sounds like and why it's cool and all that stuff so basically what I have here is a sampler and the cool thing about this and also Ableton, these are both applicable, is that you can load a, up to 128 samples in here and then do something called distribute between select equally. And that way, anytime you switch the select knob, you'll play a different sample. So I've got a bunch of Foley open here. And every time I move the select tool, it's actually going to select something between one, a value of zero and 128. If we double click on here and you look, there are the entire samples in this particular place. And if you really want to get intricate with it, then what you can do is actually edit each individual sample. But that's not all. I'm going to cover this now before we actually get into doing this from scratch, just to kind of let you know. But one other cool thing that you can also do with this is that you can actually set these to granular mode. And whenever you do that and you load up maybe some kind of modulators with texture and stuff, you can end up getting some interesting results by combining the select knob, the position knob, and also the grain knob. So just for theory's sake, one cool thing that I think that you would really enjoy about this is that you can actually set a bunch of randomizers to kind of move all of these independent of each other. And I'll show you that further along in the video. However, just for quick demonstration purpose, if you already know how to do 128 racks, then there's kind of already something that will kind of keep you interested throughout the video. So let's go ahead and make one from scratch. It's very easy to do. All you have to do is pull yourself up a fresh sampler. And then from here, what you're going to do is go to create multi-sample. Now, from here, one thing that I love about Bitwig is the fact that if you go into the sample selection, you still like almost always have access to your library. So you can always just like immediately pull direct inspiration from this as opposed to having to click out of windows and go into something else or whatever. So what I'm going to do is we're going to pull up some of the samples from Braxton and the Discord sample pack because it has a bunch of kitchen Foley. And I think that Foley is a great place to start. You can do this with a bunch of kicks. You can do it with a bunch of claps. You can do it with a bunch of random base samples as I did in Aberrants. But what we're going to do with this is really just grab a bunch of stuff here. So I'm going to start with Kitchen Atmos and I'm going to highlight all the way down until I hit 128. 128. And all you have to do is click drag over here. If you initially just throw all these in here and then you kind of go like this, it's not gonna do anything. So what you have to do is make sure that all of these are highlighted then you're going to go right click and go to distribute select equally. Now at first sight, you're not really going to see that anything's changed, but you'll go over to the star right here and this as well. You will see that the select has been distributed between all of this stuff. And so what this does for us is now whenever it hits something, you'll see that it'll select between all of these samples. You can get all these to play at the same time too, by the way. And if you really wanted to, then you can go into texture mode and play them all at the same time, which would give you some crazy results. But that's it for another time. So one more thing that I wanna do with this is I'm gonna to go to this, make sure that all of these are highlighted again. And then I'm gonna come over here to the left and go to key tracking and turn that all the way down. Now, the reason why is because all of these are by default set to C3. And so that means that a lot of these samples are actually going to be playing lower than they should. For a finer means of control, what I'd rather do is just use the pitch knob. That way, if I'm playing something and I want to change the pitch, it becomes a lot easier to do in that way. So with all that being said, now what we're going to do is have some fun. This is the first part of that. So if you can get to here, then the next thing that you do is you just create a bunch of copies of it. So with this, I've kind of already skipped ahead a little bit and made a complete rack out of all of Brexes and stuff. But essentially all you have to do from here is go into a drum rack or a drum machine rather, then grab the sampler and throw it into a drum cell. Now it's at C1. And this will start to make sense of why it's best to not use key tracking because once you have this as a drum rack, if you're trying to play keys with all these, then it's not going to, you're gonna have some like issues of it trying to recognize a cell, but also the pitch and stuff. So I'd rather just turn that off in that way. But to make this into a drum rack, you can either make a bunch of other unique sampler 128s, or you can just hold option, drag over, drag over, and drag over. Now, the reason why you might wanna do this is because you might want more than one sample playing at the same time or you might want to do something that can also be interesting, such as this. 
But what I'm going to do right here is I'm actually going to grab a modulator and I'm going to grab a randomizer. Now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the select knob and I'm going to turn this all the way up. And then I'm going to set this to bipolar. The reason why I'm going to set this to bipolar is because we're going to use the same modulator, but what I'm going to do now is copy these over again. And that way we only have to use one modulator. But instead of this going up now, I'm actually going to change this into a different direction. And so that way you're not going to get the same samples playing at the same time, if that makes sense. So now between these two, every time I hit a note, I get a different sample. And you can set the different rates of this as much as you want. So maybe you want to do quarter note, maybe you want to do eighth note. Let's go ahead and grab a lunar just to make that a little bit louder. But that's not all that we can do with this. So one cool thing that I like to do whenever I'm trying to come up with different sounds is I actually like to use an arpeggiator when I'm trying to create cool different and like, I guess, unorthodox rhythms. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to an arpeggiator and I'm going to pull this up. Then just for funsies, I'm actually going to create four more. Now what you're going to do from here is you're going to create a MIDI clip and you'll see that all of the samplers and you're going to create a long chord in this way. Now that we have the arpeggiator, we're going to set this to random. And as we play, this is going to kind of launch on its own. I'm going to solo this because we've got another one up here. Now, these are all kind of playing at the same time because these are only set to eighth notes. So we're going to match this to the speed. So as you can see, we've got a bunch of different stuff that's playing at the same time. Now to make this a little bit more interesting, we're also going to grab another randomizer here and we're going to mess with some of the points on here as well. And then we're going to add another one and this is going to control the speed of this. I'm just going to pull this down a little bit. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is add one more and we're going to change the rhythm swing or groove of this. So this is going to go from straight to dotted to triplets. Now, this might not seem that interesting, but once you actually have it set up in the right way, then you can get some super interesting results, which I'll show you here in a second. One last thing that I wanted to make sure to mention is that if you don't want all these to launch over each other or overlap, you're gonna hit right click and go to choked by and then hit all. So that way these won't ever play at the same time of each other. With this being said, I've got a bunch of different samplers over here on this one in particular, and these actually all have different samples in them. And so whenever you get a really complex rack like this, I like to call this a glitch rack, and I usually do some processing outside of this and stuff, but you can get some really interesting results by doing the same thing and having a few more to create something kind of like this. And if you want, you can even automate another randomizer over here and turn this off too. So this is keeping it unmusical. So that way you'll get some unconventional stuff as well. And the way that I would use this is just let this go for a little bit longer and set it to a resampling channel. And then because this is a bar, that means that no matter what happens in this rhythm, it's always going to repeat on time. So you're essentially creating cycles that have something that could, can be essentially like quote unquote off rhythm, but still repetitive in that way. And this is a great way to get complex kind of rhythms that you might not be able to imagine cultivating or be wanting to put the time into doing it all on your own on yourself. Now, you also don't have to randomize any of this stuff. If you just want to do the rhythm, then you can do that as well just by turning off all of the randomizers on here, which you can just do with this. And that's why I have this set to a single randomizer. Or if you want, you can have that going on and then kind of turn off this as well and kind of create your own stuff. So you can see that because of the modular environment, we have a ton of options that we can do with this. If you guys like this video, then I would always appreciate some kind of interaction with the channel. I really appreciate the likes and subs and all that stuff. Help me get to 10K if you guys want more content. And if you guys have any questions, then let me know in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.